and welcome to episode 138 of The, the Eldritch Podcast, Blast, where Magra <laughs> makes me look a fool every week. I still have my hands up from clapping us in. I was like, the second the clap is over, you're, you're, you're done. You're done, you're finished. You're finished. You're finished. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Margaret. I'm exposing you. I'm Jack. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? How are we doing? How are you? What are we up to? Tell me about your day. Tell. Oh my God, if I'm not... If you're not telling me about your day... Oh, what you've eaten you during don't said day you, and drank. You don't want to know. Who you met? Mm-hmm. Did you bump into an old acquaintance and Did, you yeah. have like said, oh, let's go and get drinks sometimes, but you know that that's literally you're never, never going to happen. You're never going to do but it. It's say just it a every panic single response. time you see them. Yeah. yeah, you see them and you're like, God, we need to hang out. And yeah, you, man, no, we need to hang out. You're never going to hang out. Zero inte- yeah. Both of you have zero intentions yeah. of but ever seeing each other ever it, again. It's polite. And the thing is, I think in the moment you mean it. In the moment, you're like, in the moment, moment you're like, yeah. man. And then you get home and then you realize that all you actually want to do is, yeah. is play World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that happen to you today? <laughs> <laughs> or did you meet an old nemesis? Mm. I actually used to have nemesis mm. when I was when I was oh, a I child. I had nemesis. Yeah, I, had nemesis. I had nemesis. Yeah. yeah, I know your nemesis. Yeah. I was about to full. Yeah, name I was them. about to full. Not going to do that. <laughs> I don't really care. I remember like years after our nemesis, we were nemesises in school. Nemesis. Nemesis. Nemesis is mm-hmm. in school, and then you know, like a few years later, we were on a night out in a club, and I saw them, and I was just like, "Oh, how's it going?" And he was like, "Oh, yeah, sound. How are you?" And I was like, "Yeah, sound." So it's over. It's over. It's, it's Jova. It's Jova. No one cares. Yeah. So all that drama from Skittle, no one cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do have nemesis. I do have nemesi. People who, if I saw out in real life, it's I on site. Would, it, it probably it's on site yeah it's probably site. to be honest yeah with you, i don't yeah, think i've got anyone like that to be honest like there's there's people who you know i would rather i would rather drag my oh my god you can't say that co- two minutes in across broken glass <laughs> you can't than ever even acknowledge <laughs> i'm gonna write that down and you, everyone, can't, you don't think i, I don't that? i certainly don't and you know That's what a swear word. you know what you're gonna have to guess what he said <laughs> that could be quite funny uh, <laughs> you guess what he said <laughs> across broken glass before i even bother to acknowledge they exist yeah I, there's two people i can think of the top of my head who oh, would there's fight a handful of people for me yeah who would fight actually on site uh, and it's you <laughs> <clears throat> So what are you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome back to the Eldridge Pod Blast. Hi! Welcome to welcome into anybody who's new. Thank you so much for being here. We love you very much. God, well, oh my God. I think there is a few new people because we, listen, we started posting shots again. Yeah. And uh, our shots have never really been massive, right? No, well, the, no. It's like, well, I think it's weird because you compare it to TikTok. Yeah. And our TikTok's always been quite successful. Apart from, you know, these days where if I post a minute over, if I post a video over a minute and 30 seconds, mm-hmm. it's like, no one's saying this. Yep. If I post a video that's a minute to a minute and 30 seconds, they're like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, sure, have it. Yeah. And right, I'm yeah, like, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to try and snip my one and a half hour to one hour 15 minute podcast down to one minute and 30 <laughs> seconds tiktok yeah thanks yeah uh yeah. but yeah we started posting shots didn't yeah, we yeah we started posting shots and um the most recent one like a time of recording i don't know what happened we went to bed and it was on like 800 views no it was on like it was on it was on 1.1k it was on 1100 views then we woke up and it was on 10,000 10, views 000 which views? for us is huge a shot getting ten thousand. that's views? really big for us so hi um thank I, I i hey i hope if you you came here because of that um we're living up to your expectations you're welcome we it's, love you it's a lot weirder here it's very in weird the, in the hour but we will t- it's right that's just the bread maker my bread that's maker. the bread maker beeping away that's saying that it's now done proving yeah yeah yeah, yeah now yeah. it's baking now time. it's gonna yeah yeah it's yeah, baking yeah. time it's, oh my god it's baking it's time. baking time oh uh, yeah it's a bit weirder here in the, in the full episode, yeah. I must be honest with you. But we do talk about TTRPGs because we do like them. We a do, lot. eventually. Eventually, we do get to it. <laughs> no, that's on stream. When we stream, it takes <laughs> oh, a long time to yeah, actually talk about anything yeah. in the bonds. When you're coming to stream, you know you're in for a yapping. Obviously, you know we're yapping. Yeah, but that's like why people come to the stream. Half. If you didn't know, oh we stream God. on Twitch uh, <laughs> every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Yeah. Tuesday, we do a gaming stream. At the minute, we're playing Pokemon Ruby. Yeah. That's at 3 p.m. BST. Yeah. And then on uh, Friday and Sunday, we stream at 7 p.m. BST, and we do TTRPG advice and homebrew and yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So come and yeah, join yeah, us. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's a great yeah. time. We love it very much. Yeah. Uh, I wish we had a camera just for your feet. 
Why? The amount you emote. You know when people emote with their hands, which I do a lot. I also do. You I also, emote with all four limbs. You emote with your legs so much. Yeah, trust me, his feet are constantly. Whenever his hands are moving, his feet are yeah, moving. Yeah, I'm just an. I'm just a. I'm just an energetic guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not really energetic, no, but, but I'm. I'm. I'm full of. I'm. F- yeah. F- I like to emote. Yeah. I like to. Man, when I used to drink, like, because oh I don't drink, God. I don't drink at all anymore. But when I used to drink. My hand gestures, which oh, are yeah. obviously quite, quite, quite a lot now, oh, yeah. turn um, that yeah, up to yeah, like yeah. what fifty? Yeah, and the voice, turn the volume. Ooh. Oh my god, crank the volume, crank <sighs> that soldier boy, two hundred percent. Oh yeah, I think as I've gotten older, I've gotten far more qu- not quiet. Yeah, no, I agree. But I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not agree. as loud as I used I, to be. Uh, you. <laughs> As we're getting older, you're just getting louder. Oh, yeah. It's I insane am. how loud I'm you are. Re- I really, you know what? I've noticed like in the past like year or so, maybe a bit longer, I've noticed I really struggle to gauge what volume my, my voice is going to come out at. But, yeah, but like... Should we get you some hearing aids? No. Like I'll just, at D&D, I'll just say something and I'm like, that, that was, was so, so loud. loud. What? It's when you get excited. It's when you get like, when you're like... Something happens and yeah. you're like, and you're like, I don't know, make a make a little noise to like exclaim how excited you are. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's, it's so loud. How loud it is. I know. I and I never used to be this loud. No, you didn't. Never. I used to really, really be able. Are to Are you control. siphoning my voice? I think I might be. <laughs> She's silencing me. I, I, oh my god, are you silent <laughs> oh or god. silenced? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, me the silence. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know why. Like maybe it's just because I'm like really comfortable around you and like our friends. So and like especially on stream, I am loud. I don't. I, I don't really care about. I am. I am people loud. being. Loud. Well, the, the thing is, I do. I'm very sensitive to sound. Like, like sometimes I'm so loud, I put myself in a bad mood because I get. <laughs> I'm so loud. I remember the other the other day, <laughs> we were downstairs just drinking coffee, and the like I'd let the dog out two or three times already, and he just wanted to go out to stand and i was just like <laughs> the thing is blue when you go outside you're gonna go out you're gonna go outside you're gonna eat grass and then you're gonna make yourself sick yeah you're gonna go so yeah. you need to be supervised outside so i was like you're not going out so i shouted out i was like bully come get back in the front room and i shouted so loud margaret was like <laughs> my, I'm, I'm in a bad mood my now. morning's ruined now <laughs> my morning's, my morning's ruined actually now. ruined now i need to go lay down because my morning is ruined <laughs> i don't know what that says about me and it's like at the um, point where like obviously when, i didn't mean to do it. No, no 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 but when you yell at the dog i i have to cover my ears i have to let you know i'm like i'm just so you know i'm gonna shout at the dog so she's like i have to cover my ears because i i can't handle it and even you know what even when i was a kid if there would be a loud noise in like a movie or a song um i i would like it i would i I think one reason it upsets me so much is because I see color when those things happen. Like when there's like a really white. loud, yeah, no, genuinely, I see like a flash of color, yeah, and it like flashbangs me, and it really upsets me. Oh my goodness! But um, I remember when I was a kid, I used to get so irritated, yeah, uh, when like loud noises would happen. Yeah, don't know what that says about me. Mm. I think. Listen, I know what you're gonna mm. say. <laughs> and do you want to know what it is? It is quite difficult to live in a house where somebody was very sensitive to noise. And a dog <laughs> that couldn't care less <laughs> about me saying his name unless I say it as loud as I possibly can. Yeah. And then he's like, what? <laughs> well, yeah. True, true. The trials, no one tells you when, you, you, when you're young, this is what your this life's going to be. This is what it's like, by the way, just so you know, when you're an adult, <laughs> these are all the things you're going to have to deal with. Oh, oh so, goodness gracious me. God, I, sorry, I don't know how we got onto that. I don't know. But... Can you uh, see the hooks on the walls? You can a little bit, but... Because we... You know what? When we got this neon sign... Well, when we got... Sorry, when not our neon sign. the brilliant sign. squad blasters who paid for it via Kofi... It's chat's so neon much. sign. Let me be real Chat from you. Twitch's neon sign. Um, I was like, we need to get like a wire, a white like thing to... Yeah. And we never did. We but should. Just get some like... The thing is, you don't want white because the white against... Because well, that's, that's like yeah, an off-white. Yeah, like an off-white. So you want yeah. sort of like a... Like a off-white tip wire cover yeah <laughs> but we'll figure it out yeah 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 we'll figure uh, it out. anyway hi anyway, um uh, before we get into topic yes if you like the video make sure to click the like button subscribe if you haven't hit the bell to be notified when we upload new videos on a monday and a thursday comment down below with all of the things that we've told you to comment already and now that it's clogging time and we're about to get into topic yeah oh oh my gosh yes speaking of clogging time um the we announced uh, last episode, <gasps> yes. um, an Attack the Unaware t-shirt is coming. Let's uh, go. This is what the design is. And we- it's dope. 
We think this is going to be the finalized design, big time, big unless time. our sample comes back in and it looks doggy doo doo for Which whatever reason. I don't think it will, uh, but. but that this is what the final design is going to look like. Um, we just thought we'd give you a heads up first. So if you want it, you know it's coming. Which you do, I imagine. I command you. The I entity command commands you. you to want the T-shirt. We've been, we've been saying, we've been threatening that we're going to do this T-shirt oh, for about since, for a hundred episodes. Yeah, lit- I literally, ever since. I it reckon happened. Attack the Unaware was probably around thirty yeah, episodes. Episode, episode oh, thirty. I, I very, very, very much agree. Man, and I remember when we lost our. Oh God, we laughed oh God. so much. Mm, so um, much. and yeah, so it's coming. Don't know when. Uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, but we will keep you updated when it is. Anything else? Yeah, down in the comments, say, uh, oh. man, I want that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, oh God, uh. I have to be careful where I touch this. Our dog, God bless him, love him. Stinkiest bum hole oh, ever. That's a stinky bum hole. And he rubs that bum hole on everything. Yeah, And at does. some point between when we last filmed yesterday and today, he's gotten on here and he's just wiped his bum hole on it. I and, don't think uh, he's gotten on that chair since yesterday. Has it been like this the Maybe. whole time? <laughs> Maybe he's oh been like that for god. a while. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, you know what? Didn't have time to go and clean it off. So, so look. Just know, I'm look. I'm sitting in my dog's pee about, pee poo poo for you. What about some more sevens in, <laughs> in Java? What about more sevens in the comments of Margaret's chair? Yeah, I, Am think, I, right? I think it needs it. I think I need it. The arm of Margaret's chair. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess uh, with all that out of the way. Yeah. Uh, let's get on to topic. Yeah. Uh, we're doing D and D. Am I the asshole? <laughs> uh, these there are two submissions in here, let's so go. thank you very much. Um, I'm aware it's really hard when you're sending in Am I the asshole submissions. A lot of the time, why why we struggle to include submissions is because you kind of know you're not the asshole, or if you are, you know. <laughs> it's tough for us to tell the fans it of is. this podcast that they're assholes. It is. But we will. It, no, no, yeah, we, we will. will, but just we'll know probably, it's hard. We'll probably do it far more gently than we would tell a random person Tot- yes. on the internet that yes. they're the asshole. Yes, indeed, indeed. But, so, but we will, we uh, will. And, you know, uh, because there has to be a lot of nuance, they are quite long. Now, you know we're doing slightly shorter episodes. There's normally eight. There is five in this one. <laughs> if we cut any out, Jack, make sure you edit whatever number I say there. Don't, I, don't, I don't know. The thing is, right, Margaret's always like, Oh, I lost. Like you always say, how many there is? It's just like you don't need to do that. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you know, you you're don't right. Need to do that. Yeah, you know what? I think it's because I like to try and be as clear as possible, so I'm never misunderstood. Because I'm misunderstood quite often. Well, you don't. You're not. Thank you. Not right now. Thank you. Not here. Thank you. No, you know. You know what? Yeah, true. You know what? Very like, true. You like this? Yeah. Thanks. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, there is so um, there is one that is very long. But, That's right. Let's um, just rip it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let's go. So this first one also if you have any am i the asshole questions uh any horror stories any unpopular opinions please send them to the submission form down below Google forms in the description down below to potentially be featured in the podcast yeah uh this has been sent in by mr rhyme i'll drag my drawers over on twitch let's go and he uses he him pronouns thank you for your submission thank you so much mr rhyme the title is i am the asshole oh, oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh oh. Hello, hello. I was listening to your most recent Am I the Arsehole 132. <clears throat> and the second story, also at 30 minutes past. Thank you. Goodness gracious, giving us timestamps. Let's go, timestamps. And the and episode numbers. Let's go. Uh, the OP came to the realization of not telling others how to play their characters. That is my rule zero of every game I've ever played in. If it's not my character, I'm not going to say anything unless it's reminding them of something that could be beneficial at the moment or if they ask for help. Yeah, no wrong with that. No yeah, wrong with that's just a, being that's like, great... just remember you've got this. Yeah, that's Because that's not being one. like, you should use this. Yeah. It's just like, in this very chaotic <laughs> yeah. moment where there's a lot of things going yeah. on, I'm just reminding you that this could be beneficial. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's no I think that. that's a really, genuinely a really <laughs> that's good That's just helping have. out the homies. Yeah. But this OP reminded me of an event that I really feel like an asshole looking back. But in the moment, it made me feel glad that they just weren't succeeding. This story is going to get me rancid vibes. Oh dear. (laughs) The plot line that led up to this was a long one. The group had been playing upwards of two years, starting at a university and then making the transition over to online when the lockdown started. Mm -hmm. When we started this new campaign, I was brand new to the game and everyone in the group had much more experience than me. 
This player, I will call them Phil, was always telling me to make stuff that would benefit the party as well as the textbook definition of a Reddit rules lawyer to the point where they would actually read out loud other PCs' abilities when they felt that that player wasn't using them correctly. <sighs> that's what we... We all love that. Yeah, that's, that, like, that's when actually that happens, my favorite thing. Oh, man. Yeah. I rejoice at my table. Yeah, I like someone... When um, somebody goes... Rifling um, through my actually... character stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jumping forward, we both had a shadow monk. We both had shadow monk characters by way of circumstance, cool. and Phil Great would class. always tell me, "Don't cast darkness because it will put everyone at a disadvantage." Come to level twelve, we all get feats, and they pick the one that gives them devil sight, the ability to see through magical darkness. Now that's synergy. <laughs> Our characters were going on a heist sort of event, and then this character brought their shadow monk. Sure enough, the first thing that Phil did was cast darkness making two out of the three three pcs useless in this interactions because our characters couldn't see i could hear the frustration in the other player and the dm's voice but the dice weren't having it and when phil's character got caught in a trap and failed their con save which was considerably lower for our level i reminded them that they also lost concentration making the magical darkness go away <laughs> get him <laughs> me and the other player finished the encounter and ever since phil hasn't been reading off abilities or effects of other characters unless prompted to the group or it's his character i really don't like how cathartic it felt just to have the dice not work in phil's favor especially since it never feels good to have the dice go against you I think it was just a culmination of them always saying not to use this one ability that could have gotten us out of some serious scraps with a party being disadvantaged to them turning it turned turn them turning to it seconds that they had the bypass. <laughs> mm -hmm. In hindsight, a simple convo or please don't tell me how to play my character probably would have cleared things up faster. But that's why in my story, I can confidently call myself an asshole. <laughs> I don't think you're I, the I, asshole. Listen, listen. I don't think you're the asshole. I, I also don't think Look, you're the asshole when as well. Someone <laughs> is, when someone is such an asshole yeah. for so long and they get their comeuppance yeah. and then you're like... You've lost concentration. Yeah, like, like listen, so. we could all, we can all sit here on our soapbox and be like, yes, you shouldn't revel in other people's misery. <laughs> but sometimes it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we're all humans. But look, does Phil deserve it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and there is something, something to be said about someone being so strict with others and being so mm -hmm. specific with others yeah. and so pushy with others. And then when it comes to them, the same rule doesn't apply. Mm. And then something bad happens. That's called double standards. That's called karma. <laughs> That's called karma. <laughs> now streaming by Jojo Siwa. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, like there's... Listen. You're human. L look, you can't help but feel <laughs> glad when, when someone's been like that the yeah. entire time, and then it happens to them, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Like, listen, would oh, I feel tastes, the same? That tastes so good. Yeah, I would. I, I would feel. I would. I you're think only a human. lot of people you're would. Only human. And yes, again, okay, yeah, totally. There is the whole like, you know, rising above it. Yeah, being a better person. <laughs> but sometimes it's just, uh, it's just sometimes, it's too good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> But yes, yeah, we understand. Uh, hey, we're all wallowing down here together. Don't you <laughs> yeah. worry, all look, of us. Look, I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, whatever. You should be the asshole, but yeah. look, and, come on, and like, Phil. yeah, yeah, man. And again, like, for Phil to be like, don't cast darkness, and then like to to I'll do what like, I want, and, and then to immediately be like, I cast darkness, I cast darkness on myself. What the fuck? Like the thing is, like, I get it because we've had a we've had a moment in our campaign. Yeah, where yeah. Matthew cast darkness. Yeah, yeah. The thing had blind sight. Yeah, he was none the wiser. Yeah, 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 yeah. And How it, would he it had advantage against the party <laughs> because obviously the party couldn't see it and they didn't understand that. And then no one could. And then no help. one could attack it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, like look, sometimes it goes wrong. Yeah. Did did after that? Did after that battle, everyone turn around to Matthew and go, "Well, well, well." Yeah, we were all like, "How were you to know?" And yeah. he felt so he bad. He felt so bad. He's beat him, and he's, he hasn't used darkness <laughs> since. And we were like, you, first of all, you really weren't to know." It like, wasn't even darkness. It was uh, I think he's black tentacles, wasn't it? Oh it yeah. Was, it uh, was um, no, it wasn't black tentacles. It was. Um, Hunger of Hadar. Hunger of Hadar, where it makes like you're blind in yeah, the thing, but it yeah, had blind yeah, sight. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it still took the 
it didn't take any acid damage either. Yeah, yeah. The type of monster So it was. we were in there taking <laughs> acid damage. Beat by being acid damage. Uh, but again, you know, that that was honestly, that it's, was just so that fucking was such funny. such a specific circumstance. Yeah, and it was just funny. And again, there's nothing more frustrating than someone telling you your abilities. There is nothing no. more fucking annoying. But Mr. The- Rhyme, how you described it being like, only, I'm only going to tell them if like they're asking or if I think it could help them mm. and I'm not going to say you have to do it. I'm just going to remind, remind them. Remind you? Gentle reminders are yeah. great. Especially for new players. Let's just say the barbarian runs in and they're gonna they're getting flanked and they don't remember to use reckless attack. It's just like, you might as well use reckless attack because you're going to get flanked anyway so they have advantage. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just, just to remind you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> like you've got that if you want it. There's such a difference between that and then what Phil is doing. Because and... otherwise the bar- barbarian is just going to get spanked with flanking mm. and not gain advantage. Yeah. So it's just like just re- refreshing them and sort of knowing, like telling a new player that interaction as to why it's probably a good thing to do, but you yeah. don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah, and like, <laughs> you know, the whole like concentration thing, we we do that all the time because as a table, we are notoriously bad for remembering concentration. I'm, I've gotten a lot better at it over, over the years, mm. but the first, the first and first half of the second campaign yeah. that we did, I forget all the time. Is, yeah, we all but did. now, <clears throat> and the thing is when I'm a player, it's it's so ingrained in me as a dungeon master. Yeah. There's so many times where I'm like, oh, you have to make a concentration check. Yeah, but yeah, but the but thing I think is, we're like, all getting really good at holding each other to the same standard. We are very much so. Um, yeah. Because you know, and it also makes you know, like dropping concentration is a big thing, and like it's only fair that if I have to do it, you have to do yeah, it. Yeah, and, and if, we're not doing it to be like, <laughs> let's drop concentration. We just remind ourselves because we all want to keep each other right. Exactly, and you know, we, we all have to adhere to the same rules. Yeah. Like, so yeah, there's there's times like that. I will never. But do you want to know what, Phil? I'd do the same to you, (laughs) my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Mr. Rhyme, I don't think you're the asshole. Nah, look, look, Phil's got the comeuppance. And you know what? If you did it after this point, you've got your, you've got the fucking. Yeah, you've, yeah, yeah, you've got the satisfaction. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like after that point, if you were still to do it, then maybe. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? Phil never did it again. So maybe Phil Phil learnt his lesson. Philip. Shall uh, I full name you with your Sunday name, Philip? Uh, thank you, Mr. Rhyme, for thank your you, submission. Mr. Rhyme. Okay, this has been sent in by Cassidy, and she uses she, her pronouns. This is long, but there's obviously a lot of nuance Cassidy's to it. Cassidy's a sick name. I know, Cassidy's a beautiful name. Cassidy I love Cassidy. is a fucking sick yeah, name. Yeah, a really, really cool name. Thank you so much for your submission. Thank you, Cassidy. Beautiful name. Uh, would I be the asshole if I ended my current campaign because I feel like I have no freedom as the DM? Okay. For context, I am a first-time DM running a campaign for four friends. We're about halfway through a ca- homebrew campaign revolving around vampires and politics, and overall, I have had a lot of fun, and my players have said the same when I asked them. But I am thinking of ending the campaign early because I feel like I do not have enough freedom as the DM. Okay. By freedom, I mean the ability to be able to create cool or interesting moments that don't necessarily fit within the rules. For example, giving a player a cool moment by having them intimidate an enemy without rolling if they've come up with a well-crafted speech. These moments will not be massively rule-breaking, but it's something I like to do to add to the story and create memorable moments. Okay. The reason that this has become an issue is because two of my players are D&D veterans and have been players or DMs for 20 plus years. They know the rules like the back of their hands and they are actually very strict when it comes to them. Okay. This has been both helpful and hindering. Sometimes them helping me with rules I don't understand has been a great help and I appreciate them so much for being so patient and so helpful with me. However, it has also become a big hindrance both to the campaign and my enjoyment because they are very strict with rule enforcement and give very little leeway. For example, we did a two session campaign before we started the main campaign so I could get a feel for DMing to see if we wanted to move into a bigger campaign. And during this, one of the veteran players, who I will just call Jay, rolled a natural 20 on a persuasion check on the villainess of the story to try to get her to run away during a fight with her and her husband. However, she is described as being fully in love and devoted to her husband. So I decided that even though he critically succeeded, this wouldn't make her completely abandon her beloved husband. Mid okay, fight. interesting. This... Uh, there's about to be a rule here that I think isn't actually a rule in the game, but go on. <laughs> this caused a small disagreement, but eventually he relented. Though he has brought this up multiple times since then, 
heavily implying that this was an unfair decision. Interesting. Just so you know, Cassidy, I don't know if you had to, like, and this isn't to tell you the rules or anything like that. You can't critically succeed on a skill check. You can't critically fail on a skill check. So you can't critically succeed on one. So if you roll a 20, it doesn't matter really what the outcome is. If it's impossible, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But that's also, you know, coming into you as a dungeon master, if something's impossible, we maybe just don't even ask for a roll. Yeah. But this person, what was their name? Uh, Jay. Jay has no right to complain because you cannot critically succeed anything yeah this this honestly this the perfect uh, we always use this example of you can't persuade the king to give the keys no, to the kingdom no and it's just like check. you know like you, oh, right well the dc is 45 it's just like instead of making the dc impossible to meet you can just say no yeah like can i persuade this person like you've made a compelling argument but and you, you all this uh, we'll, we'll yeah 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 yes but you yes. are in the right yes just yes, so you yes, know. yes 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 <clears throat> uh he has also made similar comments when things do not go the way he wants them to go for his character as he has a very specific story in mind for his dragonborn character and he doesn't like to deviate away from them for any reason or he becomes very upset okay Another example is when the party became royalty and attended the Lord's Council, which is basically the government of the homebrew world. Mm -hmm. When they first entered, I had the BBEG cast a spell to try and have one of them start dancing to cause a small scene. When I did this, I was bombarded with questions by the two veteran players. How did he do this? What spell did he use? How did he cast it? And so on. Uh... Get your nose out of my business, please. <laughs> In essence, they disagreed that what I was doing was within the rules. So while... Po Sorry. They disagreed that what I was doing within the rules was possible because I hadn't known about a certain mechanic I would have needed to pull it off. Mm -hmm. While it's true I didn't know about the mechanic, I still wanted to find a way to move ahead within the rules. But still they argued, so I eventually dropped it and moved on and I was very deflated and upset for the remainder of the session. At this point, while the campaign has and continues to have many great and fun moments, I just don't have a drive to continue. The two moments I mentioned above as well as other similar moments have made me feel like as a DM, I have no freedom for anything creative or interesting without doing hours of research just to make sure it complies with obscure rules and making sure it fits with Jay's set design for his character, lest he complain about that too. Overall, it's just really draining, and it puts me on edge when we start every session that another blowout will happen. I think it's best for everyone that the campaign just ends now. And I think as a D&D &D group, we just don't fit in terms of playstyle and expectations. So, would I be the asshole? Thank you for any opinions and advice you guys can give me. No. <clears throat> uh, like, look, I'll, I'll talk you through what you can do and conversations that you can have. But at the same time, if you are uh, if you are at the point where you're just not enjoying it, and you're at the point where you don't want to play anymore with this group, there's going to be other groups out there for you yeah. to dungeon master for. And you are so well within your right, and so that. valid also 100%. to come to the conclusion this table or at least these players just aren't for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a very normal conclusion to come to. So I'll give you some advice, and I'll you know let you know some things and stuff like that that you can say. Uh, but at the same time, if you just don't want to continue with this group you don't have to yeah if you just needed to hear like you are com you were correct you can in take what you're feeling you can take the other people from the yeah. game and go and start a different group yeah like if if you just needed to hear like you're not the asshole no you're very valid in feeling this and you you can do whatever you want to do and that's the right decision then there you go yeah that's that's that is and i promise you so many people will agree oh 100 well. but it doesn't matter what other people think it matters how it matters you how, feel it matters what you feel yeah, yeah. like mm, so like feeling deflated and feeling like low energy about wanting to do it and feeling like you honestly can't be bothered and you're on edge like i would feel the same way yeah like about this exact situation yeah, because well, of these people. We, so, we know someone who went through a similar thing Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've played with people like this who make Dungeon Masters feel like this. It's tough. It's hard to do. It's it's really hard. And it's such a normal thing to feel when you have a problem player like this because these two are problem players. Prop, like, proper problem yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, To not want to, to Dungeon Master for them because it's just hard. And you'd feel like you've not got any creative freedom and you feel like everything has to have an in-game mechanical answer and it's just like it doesn't need to be like that mm -hmm. sometimes things just happen in D&D &D to push the narrative along yeah maybe when we get into combat and maybe when we get into things like that like we have to adhere to specific rules and things like that but like the thing is right this whole like what magic what what spell did they cast first of all none of your fucking business <laughs> 
you're not the dungeon master. You don't need to know what spell they cast. They could be a sorcerer that has subtle spell, which means yeah. all of the components of the spell are like completely gone. You could like, s- how would their characters how even ca- know that? They might have a magic item that lets them cast a spell a day without any verbal or somatic or whatever components. <laughs> like you could have given them that magic item. Oh my god, it could just be a narrative thing to have a cool dance scene. It could just be a narrative thing to have a cool you dance know? scene. No, like the thing is, I'm giving you all of these ways that it could have worked. It doesn't matter. They don't need to know. No, they're they not don't. the dungeon they, masters. They do not. They need don't to know need that. to know no. why these things happen. But there's players like this. But the thing is, like for me, when these things happen, I just go, "You don't know." Yeah. And you know, like if how, they're like, "Oh well," it's just like, "No, you're not." Yeah. Like, how did he do this? <clears throat> you don't know. You what spell no is clue. it? You certainly. You absolutely know the spell. have no fucking idea. Like, unless there is a narrative <laughs> reason for you to know the spell, yeah. which you unless know, you can like, roll me a fucking like giga like twenty five plus arcana check. You have no idea. Yeah, or unless it's something like, I don't know, related to your character's backstory yeah. and an item that they have, you know, maybe maybe then narratively there's allowances, right? There's moments uh, as a dungeon master, like you are, you know, you're never going to be the complete dungeon master. Like it doesn't matter how long you've been dungeon master for, if you're brand new, if you're fucking five, six years into it or something like that. Um, like me, there's times where I ask for roles and I'm like, Sorry, I don't know why I asked for that role. You yeah, know this yeah, and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's times where I'm like, I shouldn't have asked you for that role. I'm sorry. This is this like you can't do this or something like that. We still make those mistakes. Um, so that, you know, that's such an experience. That's an thing, experience though. thing. And though. you know, Cassidy says as well. Like she said, like this is my first time being the dungeon master. Yeah. And you know, you'll just learn these things. But at the same time, you shouldn't have players jumping down your throat every yeah. time you maybe you know make a mistake. That's so all, frustrating. As dungeon yeah. masters, we all make mistakes. You put time and effort in to plan the session for these people, and they wouldn't be playing D and D in this moment if it wasn't for you. So they should show you the respect that you deserve. And currently, you're not getting that respect. Yeah. yeah. So look. In terms of the backstory for Phil, um, was that the last one? I think one? for Jay. Jay. Yes, for Jay. Phil was the last one. <laughs> yeah. uh, you got Phil on the brain. I got Phil on the brain. Thinking about Phil. I'm thinking about Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let the homies and I fuck with Phil. <laughs> uh, Jay. For the, for the backstory thing, <clears throat> players, are, di- players are different. Every yeah. player is different. Yeah. You can have the other people at your table enjoy the mystery and stuff like that but Jay might just want this curated experience. Yeah, which, and, which you know, again, I, I will say that is, it's the way he's approaching it yeah. is wrong and unacceptable. Well, but not it's, really. But, For the backstory. Know, to, to kick up a stink every single time. Like, yeah. to have a blowout argument. To, to have a blowout argument is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. To, to want that experience. Oh, no. That, that's fine. That's what I was about to say. That's yeah. actually very valid. But, you know, like, me, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't Dungeon Master for Jay because... Like, if I can't tell the story that I want to tell, yes. like, I'm just not having fun. Indeed, so, like, me DM to... Jay, we are just going to be incompatible. Like, you have to trust your DM yeah, as well you have to. to be able to take what you've said and be able to add in elements that are relevant to the story. Yeah, yeah. And and you know what? If you don't want that, you have to make it really clear. Yeah. And then you, as, you and the DM and the player, you have to agree together yeah. that, when it comes to their backstory, it's exactly as written. Yeah. There's nothing that deviates. And there's nothing There's nothing wrong with doing that if someone wants no. that. But also, I understand as a DM, if that's not something that you are, it, it, one, willing, be capable of doing. Mm. Like, you, you, you would not be it. able to do, do that. Because yeah. I have all, like, when people tell me things, like, I like to tie things from my world into people's backstories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, my, my girl will come to me with a backstory and i'll start to be like okay well i'm gonna tie this into this and i'm gonna tie into this, you know what i mean it's like so what you give me is gonna be what you give me but i'm gonna add twists and turns and yeah. like stuff like that in yeah so if i can't do that with the backstory i'm not excited i don't really want a dungeon master for you and i'll just be honest about yeah that. yeah look in this situation cassidy i think there's one thing that you can do mm. and you can just up and leave and just take the few players that totally. you enjoy and playing with and that. find some yeah. or you can have this conversation and you go to these two players and you say this is how I'm feeling this is how I'm feeling This is beca- th- these are your actions this is how it's made me uh, this feel this is how it's made me feel I don't know if you've intentionally made to make me feel like that and that's why I'm having this conversation with you yeah. but it makes me not want to DM for you anymore yeah. and it doesn't have to be as blunt as this but I think you say this it's like it stops now. Yeah. Or I don't DM for you anymore. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm already at the point where, where I'm I don't considering really not want doing to it. DM. And, you know, I wanted to 
have this conversation with you first before I pulled the plug to, to see if something could change. To give you the chance, because yeah. if you don't know you're doing something wrong, exactly. how could you ever change? Exactly. Uh, that, that's the biggest thing here. And the thing is, Cassidy, if you don't want to do that, that's fair. so fair. That's all, like, if you in your heart feel it's too far gone, definitely. I completely understand. If you go, it's too it's irreversible like even if let's say they clean up their act now the damage is done i don't want to play with them anymore you're so valid in doing that so valid 100 percent. and you know again i cannot help but hear uh cassidy you use she her pronouns i can't <laughs> help but hear yeah. as as a woman as someone who you know is fe- female presenting i cannot help but hear that you are a first time dm you have these two, you've identified them as he, him players who have 20 years experience in the game. And no one cares about it. No, yeah, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> I, I, I really can't help but hear that and go, man, to me, it sounds like there's an element of mansplaining. Big like, time mansplaining. The whole, like, going, you can't do this. Yeah, you need well, to do that. Exactly. And this feeling of like, you're a new DM and they're like, well, can craft you in the way that they see fit and i'm not saying that that's what's going on here but i can't i, I can't, can't help, help but feel that way no i can't help but yeah, feel no, like that's that fair. and, and um, did, uh, the, the thing that gets me the fucking worst is that jay this persuasion thing it's like jay's not even right but they're so upset that they didn't get to do what they wanted. They're basically telling you you're wrong when you're not. And they've brought which, it up multiple which, times. It's just like, you can't critically succeed a skill check. So whether you get a 20 or fucking a 1, if it's impossible, it doesn't matter. So and, and, you know, like, eventually relented. You should never be having conversations as an adult with other adults about about anything where someone has to relent like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean you, it sounds like you're talking about a petulant child yeah 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 which like, which jay is at like, this moment they're acting like a pe- pe- uh, petulant child yeah and the thing is i i do i actually do understand the backstory thing yeah needing it to go a certain way that's, i that's, i understand that that that's is very valid that's not, there's nothing wrong with that yeah i think how he's handling it is wrong it was all wrong but valid he's valid in feeling yeah, he's like valid that in wanting what he wants from but, D&D, you know but... the bbeg thing and the thing is if you can't have fun as a dm there's no point in doing it yeah you have you're a player you have to enjoy what you're doing and we've seen this as well we had a friend who was a dm who had a player who was not this bad i will say not pretty this bad, bad though. but like pretty like metagamey rules is written like to find like, like how did that happen like yeah tell like, me like tell me this tell me that because, it's just like it, yeah and like liked to find holes in rules is written to exploit them yeah and, and um, holes in what the dungeon master said yeah. to also exploit this and the dm god for every single time and the dm would say this to us like i cannot plan an encounter without having to worry about what this player is going to about do every eventuality so it takes all the fun out of it yeah and, and the i feel thing like is cassidy that, that's how you're feeling and now. like that in a in a way affects everybody else at the table it because does. it's just like i've got to hold you all unfortunately to the same standard that i have to hold this person mm-hmm. even though i know that none of you would do that and even yeah. if you did it might be by like not knowing that you're even doing it, but yeah. because I have to plan for this one person, and, and, I have to apply that to everyone at my table. And it was so strict on everyone it because was, yeah. of this one person. And we knew that, and it was yeah. just, it was just, it was just like heartbreaking yeah. for the dungeon yeah. master. So Cassidy, no, you are not the asshole. <clears throat> Absolutely, at all. in no way would you be the asshole no. if you wanted to leave this game. So, and I would say, if you want to try and salvage this have a talk with them mm. because they just might not know that they're doing it. They mm. might not know how it's affecting you and they will not know until you tell them. And if you do tell them and you say it's no more or I'm done yeah. and they still do it, you're done. Yeah, That's exactly. It. It's exactly. Over. But again, it, if you if you just want to draw your line in the sand there, here is here is the confirmation that you should do that, Cassidy, yeah. if you want to do that. And if that. you do do that, join the Discord. Yes. There is 1,700 people in there and political vampire campaign. <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, about 1,700 <laughs> of the 1,700 people in there are going, <laughs> give it to me. Yeah. And all of those people will respect you as a dungeon master, no matter how you, how you identify, yeah. no matter how much experience you've got. Yeah. They, will, they will understand yeah. and respect you. Definitely, 100%. Cassidy, thank you so much for your submission. Um, please let us know how it goes. Yeah, let, let us, us know, know how the outcome of this is. I really want to know. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the rest of these are for them Reddit. Let's get it. We got we got two, we got three left. We got some left. Yeah, we got some. We got some left. We got some left. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how long it goes. So the title of this is 
Oh my goodness. Oh my god. I'm so oh sorry. What the hell? She's a bit burpy. Oh man, that was so gross. I'm sorry. She's a little burpy. Oh god. Oh, gross. You only burp. Jeez. Only natural bodily functions. Goodness You're just getting gracious. out some gas, am I right? Sorry about that. Fucking hell. Uh this one is the title is Are We Being Too Sensitive? Is this a valid reason for us to leave the table? Probably you probably aren't <laughs> being that sensitive. Let me just tell you right now, but I'll wait and see. <laughs> My DM is no longer satisfied with the world he made, and he feels like their bad blood and memories linked with it due to drama and players leaving. It's the restart of the first two campaigns and we've been playing in this world for over a year, almost two. I'm torn. Our characters haven't completed good arcs and me and another player are unsatisfied with not fully exploring our characters. We're both hurt. Our current DM wants to help us work on the new world law while he tries to rush the world ending and whatnot in a bow. Thing is, me and the other player don't want a new world. We like this world. The DM, though, hates it and is looking forward to creating a new one. The problem is we're both really attached to our current characters and we don't want new ones and we don't want a new world. Is there a way that we can break it down gently that if he does this, we will not be participating in World 3? Is there a way that we can all be happy here? I'm considering not coming back for campaign three and so is the other player. We don't want him to be miserable, but with how it's going, we're upset as well. Is there a middle ground here? What would you do? I don't want them to be miserable, but if they do anything that they want, <laughs> I'm going to tell them that I don't like it. Yeah. So look, like the thing is you can take your new characters. This dungeon, like you, I feel like players don't maybe understand if you don't want to dungeon master yep. and you don't want to turn up to that session for whatever reason, it's almost impossible to push yourself through. Agreed. And if you push yourself through, you're going to burn yourself out, yeah. which means you're not going to enjoy it. It's like we just said to Cassidy, <gasps> yeah. the DM has to, you have above to enjoy it. all else, has to enjoy have it. Have to enjoy it. You have to. It's impossible to dungeon master without enjoying it yeah because you'll just burn yourself out yeah it is and, and, and that will bleed over into everything 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 and everyone so <laughs> I, I, it's not a case of sensitivity no it's in not the I, I, I don't i the don't think is, so at all no you I don't can think take so. these characters these backstories and put them in the new world yeah this dungeon master but there's bad blood people have left there's been all sorts of like negativity about this campaign I wouldn't blame them no, for I wanting wouldn't. to change. I wouldn't either. But the thing is, like, you turn up and play in this person's world that they create for you yeah. and they run for you. They want yeah. you to be part of the world building. And all you want to say is, if you change, we're going to leave. Is the most... Is the most... What am I trying to say? Is the most... Like selfish? It's selfish. Yeah, It's yeah. the most tone-deaf, selfish thing. You You can't look at your dungeon master and be like, man, I feel bad for this person. Like having to go through all of this, and but not I'm not want coming this, back for campaign three unless we, we unless we do unless this we one continue. thing that I want. Yeah, I I agree, and the thing is, I I agree. It's not a case of being so sensitive. No. I, I I think OP is worried that they're being too sensitive because they care about their character. That's not sensitive. You caring about your character is not ever too sensitive. No. So so get that out of your mind. But I do think you're being unfair. I, I think you're being unfair. Yeah, I think like. If Go you're on. so bothered, DM it yourself. Yeah. Like that's, if you're so that, bothered, that, finish that, it off yourself. And that's a really that listen, that's <laughs> that's a really blunt and harsh way to say it. But you know, there's a reason you as a player probably aren't DMing. Yeah. Right? Probably. There's, there's a reason. Because you don't have the time. Yeah, because you don't want to, because you're not experienced enough. Even though I don't believe that there is such a thing as too experienced to be a DM. But like, you know, there's reasons why this person is the DM and you're not. And there is so much extra work that goes into being a dm mm. that you have to plan everything you have to have the whole world ready you have to have the npcs the combats and i can't imagine anything worse than having to put in work i don't know how often you play we, for example we play, we play every weekly. week if you didn't like the game it made you upset every time you did you you were done with it to have to do that for the sake of other people like that would feel terrible dreadful and if you're friends with this person i think you should be able to put aside those feelings and you're so valid in having those feelings by the way yeah so the valid thing is in you've it. got an option 
Yeah. You've got an option to take the character that you currently have and bring it into the new world. Yeah. You've got a, to, you can reimagine the character. You yeah. can change things that you maybe didn't like about the backstory. Yeah. You can ask if there's certain things about this world that you really like that could be reimagined in the new world and things like that. So it's like a little bit of like the old world and the new world. And you can explain why you want that to the dungeon master. Yeah. But the dungeon master, they don't really have an option because if they do what they don't want to do, they're going to burn out and yeah. not do it. Yeah. You don't have that option. Yeah. You, like, and it's, I know it's not, it's as simple as this, but you just turn up and play. Mm. the dungeon master doesn't get that luxury no they have to plan yeah they totally. have to think they have, they have to, to think backstories yeah, npcs totally. combats all these things world law world building you don't have to do yeah. that and like this is not to say that op isn't valid in what they're feeling no but i think you're not considering what the dungeon master yeah, feeling is yeah the problem. I, I think that's it like op you are so valid in being hurt by this you're so valid in being like they didn't reach a, a happy ending there and, wasn't any that stinks we didn't explore them fully you're valid in being upset by that yeah. and you're allowed to be upset by that 100 percent. you ask the question is there a way that we could all be happy i i don't, don't think, think so. so i don't think so i don't but... think so i think one of two things are going to happen either the dm's going to stop this world and you're not going to join them or you're, gonna, you're not go- or you're not going to play anymore. Or you're not going to play anymore because you're going to try and make them stick to this world, which they don't want to do. Yeah, and it's so vo- it's 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 so fair for them to want to do that because if you don't want to dungeon master something, I understand. Like you know, when we sign up for a campaign, you want to see it to conclusion. Of course, player. of but course. But when people leave and there's arguments and there's bad blood, they like of course there's going to be negative connotations tied to that world. And for the dungeon master to just want to move on in that situation, yeah like yeah. is so fair yeah but you not seeing that in yeah my opinion, i know i know i know is just but maybe that's because that it's so easy when you're feeling an extreme emotion like being upset mm. it's so easy to become really secular with that and not be able to consider how everyone else feels in that moment i hope op has taken a moment to think the the comments to this were pretty much very much what we yeah. said right like I hope OP has taken a moment, probably wrote this when they were upset, has been like, yeah, okay, they're my friend and I- I'm going to go forward with it yeah. or I'm simply not. And that's fine and that's as well. that's also fine. That's fine. And but m- I, th- no, sorry. No, no, no. Go no, I, I, I was just going to say, sometimes, change is scary. Change is sometimes scary. Sometimes yeah, 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 yeah. we put our backs up and we, may- we don't intentionally do it but we make it harder than it has to be. We put, we go for the path of resistance, not the yeah. path of least resistance. Yeah. Maybe, and I don't know for certain, there's a chance if you did help your DM do this new world law. Could be so good. They're trying to include you, you know? Yeah, it could be such a great, brilliant thing. If, if you open your mind to it, um, you might find that you enjoy it. Hey, you might find that you might not. Yeah, and then that's also fine. But you won't know until you do. And, and is there a chance they could just bring their old characters into this new world? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, and f- for me, in these situations, like, I do get a little bit like harsh towards the players because I'm a dungeon master. Yeah, yes. And because I know how much it takes yeah. and how much effort there is to like go in to do this. And for, for when a dungeon master is so open and honest about how they feel yeah, totally. to their players totally. about like not wanting to do something totally. anymore. Yeah, and totally. players are so like cold about it. Yeah. Just like hits me in the feels yeah so no hard. i know yeah i know i understandably yeah i, so I think i do co- I, I do come at these with like a, such a dungeon master perspective well, no, the, the thing is op is valid in how they feel but the thing is you can be valid in how you feel and still act like an asshole yeah exactly <laughs> like, yeah and you know i know this technically wasn't an am i the asshole but you know i don't think it's a case of being too sensitive i think i think it might be a case of being an asshole. being an asshole you being an asshole yeah i i, I really hope I don't think there is a world where everyone can be happy with mm-hmm. those only two options, mm. but I think there is, and there is a what, way forward. If if you went to your dungeon master and you explained how you felt, but then you were like, I do want to play because yeah. I want to support you, but I do want to bring my old character. And the dungeon master was like, no, I would think that then... Agreed. Like, you know, there's got to be give and take here for each party because we both want something. Agreed. It's like, that would be... If the, if the dungeon master was then like, yeah, of course, and help me build the world so there's bits of the old world in it so it feels awesome. Yeah uh then everyone's happy agreed so. agreed so yeah what do you think i'd be interested to know have you been in a situation like this uh would if if your dm was feeling like this what would you do because again very valid and feeling like yeah, that yeah. but um you know i think there's ways to move forward 
that isn't an ultimatum. Yeah. yeah, totally. 100% Indeed. agree. Indeed. <laughs> uh, all right, this next one. Uh, this is this is also the Reddit. Uh, oh and this is recently I, 27 non-binary, started playing D&D for the first time ever. Awesome. Okay. Well, I've never played. I've watched shows and I've listened to hours of podcasts, so I may not understand it completely, but I get the gist of it. You'll probably have a pretty good understanding. Yeah. We had our second session this weekend and we are playing Curse of Strahd. Our very first combat session started and I was excited to see what we could do. To my surprise, my level one paladin was immediately hit with three necrotic attacks that knocked me down. This was the first interaction and I wasn't given any kind of chance. I was flawed that a level one monster was able to one shot you. I questioned the DM in a joking manner that we're only level one and it's wild to be hit like that so early. He laughed and we continued the session. My paladin was revived, but I was kind of out of it for the rest of the game. After we finished, I privately messaged our DM that maybe he was being a little harsh with the attacks, as I had never seen beginner monsters club you down like that. He responded that this was exactly as it was written in the module and that I should get used to having my characters die. I won't lie, I was hurt and I asked if he was serious. He assured me he was. Because of this, I'm having some serious reservations of continuing the campaign and it's soured D&D as a whole for me. I'm aware that everyone plays differently, but I'm also new to this while everyone else is a seasoned player. I haven't spoken to our friend group or our DM since then and as the days have gone on, I find myself more and more angry at how unfair it is. So was my anger uncalled for. Or am I just being too sensitive about my first character? So there's a couple of things here. I've heard Curse of Strahd yeah. <clears throat> is quite harsh. We in literally... In terms of the combat. In like a couple of episodes ago, we had something about Curse yeah. of Strahd and so many people were like, Curse of Strahd is brutal, it's by the rough. way. Apparently yeah. there's so like... And the thing is, it's like, well, that's exactly how it's written in the book. It's just like, you don't need... Yeah. As a dungeon master, you don't need to take the book as canon. Like, yeah. if it seems a little overtuned, yeah. you can just bring yeah. it down a little bit yeah. to make sure that you're like party survives, yeah. especially in the first session. But, but also at the same time, they're very the, the DM is also very entitled to be able to run the module rules as written too. One hundred percent. And if the dungeon master was clear with like it's going to be quite tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like expect to go down. Yeah. Like uh, in combats and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It's not going to be like a walk in the park. Yeah. Then the players like prepared yes okay i need to make sure that i'm not maybe like opening myself up to too many like uh, attacks like yeah. maybe have my back to a wall or something like that move not too far from the group and yeah. things like that yeah. you know then you begin to play a little bit more strategically instead of just like leroy jenkins your way in there <laughs> yeah. because it, I, that could result in death yeah so it's like <sighs> you and this dm clearly don't want the same thing from combat yes and that's not there's nothing wrong with that on no, either no, perspective no. no 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 and the thing is i i do think again though you know we had no idea curse of strad was supposed to be this brutal really mm. yeah, up yeah. until like i'm not kidding you like a week or so ago but also we've never played it yeah yeah exactly so it's like how would a new player know but at the same time was there even a session zero that went over how brutal the module is did anyone know how brutal the module is? Mm. I, and I, you know, the fact that the DM after the fact was like, yeah, like that's normal, by the way. Um, and I, I think, you know, being saying I should get used to having my characters die, in my opinion, is maybe a little bit too harsh and blunt. But the thing is, if you hear that in session zero, then, and then you you're prepared know that for it's, it. Yeah, then you, you can also, also go, maybe, you know it's not, maybe, maybe this isn't for me. Exactly. But if you hear that after session one. Yeah, after your character did go down and after die. you were unbelievably <laughs> yeah. surprised at how hard you got hit and then went down yeah to hear like oh you should probably get yeah. used to that yeah i think this might be a session zero that's, issue that's a sh that's a shocking revelation yeah, I, to I agree <clears throat> especially if you're somebody who's like i don't i don't know maybe into dimension 20 maybe mm, into critical role mm -hmm. but the combats like brendan's combats can be can be savage <laughs> like i remember watching uh fantasy high the con fight i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god is this a tbk i was like oh my god uh and you know we've all seen what matt can do like when he wants to fight fight to be hard like in critical role it's it's like bad mm. and matt is not shy of killing people mm -hmm. in in his games and stuff like that so like you know but that's only now and then turning up in session yeah one. i agree and this I, is the I, thing I, I agree. for me a session one combat is for the players to like 
Show yeah, who they are in combat. Agreed. It's like a narrative combat more than anything. It's like yeah. you, you, you know, you want to be like, oh, I go into a rage. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, I cast a spell. This is what it's flavored like. You know, it's like it's not really scary or anything. Yeah. Like agreed. That. I, I genuinely think this is um, a session zero 100%. issue. To be fair, I do think the DM has been honest after the fact. I agree. Yeah. And, yeah. and has been like, this is how it's going to be. And the thing is, I. An OP, I don't want you to think for a second you're being too sensitive about your first character. Absolutely no, absolutely not. not. The whole mm. point is you care about your D&D character. Yeah. You caring that they died isn't being sensitive. Not sensitive at all. But, you know, do I think that this isn't the right table and module for you? Potentially. Maybe. May being honest, and, maybe. And if you'd have known in session one, exactly, it might have been a different exactly. scenario. And, you know, now the whole, like, it was just somebody outside. Oh my god! Some kids outside playing, that sounded jaunting like, around. Sounded like my dog. It sounded like it sounded like him He's screaming. Asleep. Oh my god! Um, you know, I haven't spoken to my DM in days, and I'm getting more and more angry. You know, sitting on resentment doesn't serve anyone. You do, do you want know be a good a good thing to do here? I was a paladin. I go to the DM. I'm now a. Uh, Twilight cleric. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to pump out the heals. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have a decent AC. I'm gonna be able to like heal myself, keep up people alive. I'm probably not gonna be in the fray too much, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something like that might be better yeah. for you. Like and being a frontline fighter in a campaign this totally. hard, you're probably gonna be the totally. one that goes down quite a lot. And I fully understand the whole like my paladin was revived, but I was out of it for the rest of the game. I get totally it. The, get it. Sh the shock. I totally get it. Takes it. you out of the moment. Takes it, you out it the does. scenario. It, no, it does. But I will say, now you know going forward, if you decide to stay at the table, now you know going forward, this is something that could happen. I think going forward, if you were to allow it to take you out of the session again, um, if you know you don't have control of that happening, I don't think this is the right table for you, yeah. honestly. And that's fair. And like, that's so and totally that's, fair. Yeah. Oh my God. 100% so fair. So fair. Man, I think we would love Curse of Strad. I was just thinking that. I was like, should I run it? I think you should. I think you should run Curse of Strad. After your next one, you should run Curse of Strad because it's like a year, two years. What, Curse of Strad is? Yeah. Is it a long thing? It's a really long thing. Oh. Yeah, a really long thing. I guess it can be whatever mm. you want it to be, to be fair. Yeah, then probably won't run it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you should. That long. I would love to play mm. Curse of Strad. Maybe somebody else should run it for us in the, in the intermediary. No. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret had somebody else. I was I was playing Valorant last night, and Margaret had somebody else tank for her oh. in a dungeon. Oh my I, god! So I wasn't the tank. Horrible. And Margaret was like, horrible, horrible, awful. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Awful, awful experience. I feel like that's so the way that like when you. when when other people dungeon master for you, about that aren't me. You're like, nope. Nope. <laughs> no, thank you. No, no. You're, oh, my, you're my forever DM. Oh, we have one more. To be fair, it's a short one. Yeah, let's crank it. You want to crank it? Or you want to? You want to call it there? No, no. Yeah. Crank it. Uh, yeah. No. I, also, I don't think anyone's the asshole in that one. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think, I don't think any. Asshole. I think both are more than valid to run the session how they want. Yeah. Want to want a session to turn out how they yeah. want. I think that's just, just a, a communication mismatch. thing. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so this is titled. I'm lost. I'm lost. It's not, it's not titled I'm lost. Uh, this is titled Am I the Arsehole for telling my 16-year-old cousin she could pay my husband for GMing her Dungeons and Dragons group. While on a family birthday party for cousin one, female, 21, my husband, 35, and I, 30, started discussing possibly expanding our pool of available pen and paper RPG players by posting an offer online, offering GM services for money. About um, about as much or less a cinema service would cost per person per six hour six hour session. She was supportive and agreed it would be a great way to finance a hobby that requires us to buy quite a few expensive expenses and books. Cousin two, sixteen year old, jumps in and tells us she has a group of friends who would surely take us up on the deal. We got carried away in planning the details of what a session would look like with her right away. Days later, she told us she couldn't get a yes. <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my. Couldn't get a yes from all of her friends, uh, all her friends' parents, and that closed the matter for us. Now I get an angry text message from my aunt calling us morally reprehensible for seducing minors into paying for a potentially addictive online game with strangers. <laughs> 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 my husband is so insulted and he refuses to go on any more family events where we would meet her unless he gets an apology for her from her uh totally fair <laughs> i i get that there are too many logistical problems with playing with minors and i wouldn't argue with parents that don't want that 
But it's an adventure game. Zero visuals or explicit content and just a fee paid for the 10 plus hours of work that my husband would put into it. <laughs> okay. So tell me your aunt doesn't understand what the fuck she's talking yeah, about. Tell me your aunt I literally has no fucking clue what D D is. Yeah. Tell me your aunt thinks that uh video game violence yes causes uh, real causes life real violence. life violence yeah, totally. which has been disproved a bajillion times yep but tell me your aunt only believes what she sees on the tv <laughs> yeah to believe those ai photos on facebook <laughs> yeah, of jesus <laughs> yeah. as the mermaid Kids, yeah. <laughs> uh, like the thing uh, is uh, like like if if they you know like you're 16 you're not like a, like a child child yeah you probably got you know like a part-time job and got a little bit of money yeah, well, and the thing is tell you what spending your money on D D with your friends and agreed. stuff like that agreed that's a that that's a great way of spending i money. agree and you know what the thing is i understand the first part to a certain degree you know your mother hearing that your 16 year old is potentially going to play with like a 35 year old man I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I really do. Let a, less, lest be a group of girls mm. playing with a 35 year old man. I understand. I would also probably be concerned. I, if yeah, would, it was a random ass man who wasn't married into the family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, e exactly. Yeah. And you know, like, yeah, like I as a dungeon master and as a human being would never DM for a minor. No. But that's also no. because. I don't like kids, so <laughs> I don't want anything to do with them yeah, personally. And and I, I do agree there are certain things that are not, uh, what's the word? Acceptable? Ex no, yeah, that, that aren't like, acceptables for, acceptable for minors to be part of in D&D. Yeah, 100%. I but just, fully, fully believe that. Like, I think um, a 16-year-old kid could play in my game and be totally fine because I don't do yeah. any, like, sexual content really yeah yeah like uh, you you want, might want to like romance an npc or something yeah, like that yeah, 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 but yeah, if yeah, it's yeah, the black yeah. and stuff like that yeah. i would probably just completely take romance off the table completely 100 yeah. percent for, you know, for a table like that you do but, get into the realms with minors as well it's like they can't consent to things like you know if it's heavy gore yeah you never 16 year old you're still trying to figure out who you are but that's not to say that Minors shouldn't play D D because I believe they should, but in a very specific way. And to be fair, it sounds like OP and their husband would be doing it in, in a way that's appropriate way, like, for sixteen year olds. Like a group of sixteen year old uh girls. Yeah. I don't think there's a better place for them to play than with a adult family member. Yeah, I agree. Like, that I agree. Is, that is that's like like you mm. DMing for my nephew yeah. and a group of his friends. Yeah. It's like, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. You want somebody who, you know, who will make sure the best interests are at heart, who, you know, will look out for them and stuff like that. And who's going to do that better than family? I agree. Like, I, and, you know, that's not to say, by the way, that family can't be awful and, and you know, 100% nothing agree. bad happens within a family unit. No. Of course not. But, you know, a, a, tr a trusted adult who you know the 16 year old is like hey i would like to play with uncle with uh, yeah you know uncle i would like to play with uncle jeffrey yeah you know like that's and like you know the the to me when it comes to family i've got a very tight-knit family and like i love my family very much and stuff like that and if i was to offer paid D, &D services if my nephew came up and was like yo me and my friends want to fucking play D, D. can you run a session for us i probably just wouldn't charge them yes. but that's just me because yes like that's just the way it is in our family yeah, like, I, I i agree but I, I that's do not to that. say that you couldn't like no. your time is worth money yeah and like you're worth that and if you want to charge for that that's totally fair and hey if they approach you saying hey like we'll, we'll that sounds we like a great you. deal we want to like, pay like, you yeah yeah, that, that I feel like, yeah. Now, you know, seducing minors into paying for a potentially addictive online game. Could you have tried to use any more buzzwords? Yeah, oh my God. Seductive? Could, su seducing? Addictive? Man, you can't, you cannot use language like that. We're seducing talking about- Seducing minors? We're talking about D&D. &D. Yeah, and we're talking about someone who's married into the family. Married to a member of family. You cannot say they're seducing Man. minors. That's unacceptable. That's so unacceptable to say. <laughs> you you fucking owe this person oh, an that's, apology. That, yeah. You are- God. You are- Ah, you are whack yeah. to think that you can say that's, those that's, words out loud that is and so, get away with it. That is so But you want to know what? 
old people yeah, don't just think they can say whatever the yeah, fuck they, they want they don't with fuck. no fucking yeah, consequences. 100%. It's unbelievable. And, and the thing is, I think the thing that makes me the, the most upset about this is, you know, uh, a, a potentially addictive online game with strangers. I Who's look, the stranger like, as well? Though, eh? And I look at D&D, you know, with, with the experience that I've had, and D&D has changed my life and everyone's lives I know. Every single person's life I know for the better. D and D has helped so many people. It's In helped so many people ways. become creative. It's helped people have an outlet. It's helped people face demons that they can't do it's in real life. It's helped people like break through barriers and walls that they couldn't in real life. Yep. Like identify themselves yeah. as what yeah. they truly want to Understand be identified as. Understand themselves. Or to get, a degree that they could never before. Get closer to people. You know, Make this, friends. This like o- lifelong friends. Yeah. This online game with strangers. Yes. Sure. Okay. What about? seducing minors <laughs> like, into an addictive online game. And, and you know, like, it, it's so upsetting that it's still by old people. And don't worry, all the old people will die off eventually. But like, <laughs> you know, it's so upsetting that D&D is still tarred with the satanic panic brush that it was back in the 70s and 80s. It's not, though. No, no, it, like, isn't. Not. no it isn't. No, it isn't. Just old people just say things. Yeah. They and, just say things to say things. And like, it could... For your cousin, this could have been a completely door opening experience that could in- enlighten her to bigger things, yeah. to other things. Or it could not have been. Hey, listen, it could not have they been. Just they could have hated it. They could have not enjoyed just, it. Like, that's fine. And they, they might not have gotten that experience out of it. But to rob them of it because you're so small minded to be like, oh, you're seducing man is an addictive online game. <sighs> like, Tell me. Are you bored? That, yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah, bored? Yeah, Have you got nothing like, else going on? Like it and, and again, it's easy for me to say that in the position I am now, knowing what D D can do for people and having hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people tell us every day how much D D has changed their lives. I, I realize we're in a very niche position here. But you ask anyone who's played D D, even if it's not as deep as that, people go, Yeah, it's great fun. I get to hang out with my friends every week and play games. The thing is though, I bet you don't mind your your like nephew or wherever they are to you, your grand nephew. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I bet you don't care that they play Fortnite. Yeah, like, like or, which or is no, which like, is a very addictive game. Yeah, or, no, or maybe you do. <laughs> like, yeah, and, or maybe you and, do you know, actually. <laughs> which is quite predatory in terms of like how much money they want you to spend yeah, on the agreed, game and stuff agreed. like that. Yeah, I agree. With, in, in terms of yeah, advertising. no, I get the feeling that Auntie would probably not like that probably, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the feeling Auntie would like not like that You're too. F- yeah. You're fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll, you're fucking weird. Yeah. For saying things like that, you're fucking weird. Yeah, I know. That's and a like, weird thing to say. T- to not even try to hear them out. I think that's that's the most egregious thing. To just tr- not even hear them out about what is going on. And by the way, OP, your husband, oh my God, so, oh, so, so valid. If being that so fucking, offended that person's that. there ever again, not turning up. God, if someone and, accused and you. The thing is, the thing is, if anyone ever makes a stink about it, just direct them that it's their fault. Yeah. Man. And until they apologize, that's the way it stays. God. Like people th- like that don't get they don't get to get away with it. Yeah. They don't get to get away with just it. All old people in it. Like this is it. Like I've had family like like there's certain members of my family who I'm not a massive fan of. And when they've been like horrible to me or horrible to Margaret in any way, like um and I make a stance, it's like I'm the one who's yeah, making but the that's, problem. Yeah, that's always how it is. And it's just like, no, the problem has been made by somebody and I'm just standing my ground. And until I get an apology, which is exactly what you should do, yeah. never again will we be, in the, be seen in the same room. Yeah. Because it lets them know that they can't act like that. Yeah. And the thing is, because we let them just fucking get away, like all people, we let them get away with this yeah. behavior. And because people, because yeah, then other people, your other family members like, oh, they're family. And it's I like, I don't give a fuck. It, it's like, <laughs> I don't care. Fucking one iota of a single fuck. Yeah. If they're family, yeah, it it doesn't matter. Like, and you know what the thing is, we used the, the we used that for being like husband is family. Hus- you should trust husband, but <laughs> like respect and trust is something yeah. that is earned. Yeah, and I would like to hope that husband has earned that respect, husband. especially if husband has married you. Husband, yeah, you know, like husband, yeah. But you know, you have to earn that respect. It doesn't matter if you're blood. It doesn't matter if you're you've been born into this family. If you're you an have asshole, to earn your respect. you're an asshole. Yeah, it doesn't I matter agree. if you're my family or not. I agree. But you know, unless you give me a reason to like, like I said, I'm close to my family. 
they've not really given me a, a reason to not trust them. Yeah, yes. And, you know, they care about me, they care about Margaret, yeah. they care about my dog, you know, they love us very much. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the ones on the outside. <laughs> yeah, it always is, though. It, it always, always is. is. It always is. Oh, man. Yeah, it always is. Family's complicated. Family is complicated. Family's complicated yeah. for a lot of people, and I understand that. <laughs> Often. <laughs> oh, How about mean? that? Often. We're a family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm my gosh, what am I on about? I'm, I'm your family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dog's your family. Yeah. I guess. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing about being an orphan. You have, there's no family issues. <laughs> yeah, ain't no family issues if you ain't Only got up one, in here, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All well, right, gamers. that's that. <laughs> well, uh, www.eldridgepodblast.co.uk. Uh, if you go on there and the Attack the Unaware t-shirt isn't up yet, it will be soon. Uh, but go and check out some other things like that. Uh, it directly supports me and Margaret. Another way you can support us is shopping on our Etsy store. Down below, you will find our Etsy store Hellbound Dice. Code Poblast will get you 10% off everything at checkout. Notebooks, yes. t-shirts, badges, all the good D&D goodies there. Like the video, comment, hit the bell. Join us on Twitch. Subscribe. Join us on Twitch, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. <laughs> Anything else? No. All those good things. I love you. I love you. Bully loves you. Mm. We've been the Eldritch Podblast, and we're going to see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.